After a month in Romania, it was time to start heading south to Bulgaria. If you've also cycled around the Black Coast or you've ever been in that area, leave us a comment below. I'd love to hear about your experience as well. We sorted out the flat, then made our way along the coast to Constanza. It's amazing to see how much has changed and developed over the years. Mamaya always had this sort of premium vibe for Romanian tourism, but now it's just spread right up the coast with more and more hotels, developed boardwalks and party bars and clubs. It's still mad cheap though, so worth checking out as an alternative to other Euro destinations when you're allowed to travel again. Where are we? Tell me where? In Constanza. We got to Constanza and chilled out at this old casino on the coast. It's using a lot of adverts for like perfume or toilet water, but it's clearly falling apart. It's a shame because it's a beautiful building. I vote that they should like fix it. We're here in Constanza. Near the famous casino. And we're gonna continue going down the coast. And that's wow, this really wasn't on my head very well. Safety first. Riding along the coast was lovely and we managed to mainly stick to small roads. It felt totally wild and sort of desolate like we'd reached the end of the earth. We cycled into Vama Vecchi. I think that's how you pronounce it, so I'm just going with that. We'd heard a lot about it and that we must stay here. I think it sort of used to be a bit of a mecca for hedonistic hippie vibes. And certainly coming in, there was tons of semi permal caravan and alternative lifestyle people kicking about. And there's still a nudist beach, but the center was like chaotic with party goers and revelers. And it felt like the whole thing had just got very, very commercialized. One campsite was completely full and they wouldn't let us keep our bikes there locked anywhere on site. So we totally dingied that. We were told of another spot by a guy who's clearly as high as a kite and taking photos of like everything. The wild goose chase led us to a very grumpy campsite owner who was extremely reluctant to let us stay there. We set up and started cooking and then the guy started shouting at us that we can't use our alcohol burner to cook because no fires were allowed. We were tired and fed up by this point and just got completely pissed off of being messed about in this town. So much so that we were like, right, that's it. We've had enough of Romania and we're going to cycle into Bulgaria tonight. We got to a nearby campsite that was a bit calmer and we're so happy that we've made that decision. A completely normal and logical reaction to getting told you can't cook. We had an amazing time in Romania, but it can also be an exhausting place. From the crazy drivers, constant barbecues, and also people just having a bit of a resting I want to kill you face. That being said, it had boasted some of the nicest landscapes and cycling of the trip. We'd met amazing people, and most of them were actually really friendly if you just smiled and waved at them. With all that in mind though, we were definitely ready to experience a new country, and having been to Bulgaria before, I was so excited to explore it by bike. The next day, we planned to go to Varna, but Lily hadn't been feeling so well, so we aimed to find a place a bit closer, in Topola. We had a lovely breakfast watching the sunrise over the Black Sea before setting off. We'd wanted to follow the small coastal path, but the sand was just too much for our thinner tyres, so we managed to get back on the road. It was a bit of backtracking, but it was fine in the end, and the roads were still pretty quiet. We stopped off for a coffee and to buy some Bulgarian SIM cards in Kavarna, one of the greatest towns in Bulgaria. Why you ask? Well, it's home to the only statue in the world of Ronnie James Dio. Honestly, I couldn't believe it when we were sitting drinking a coffee and there on Google Maps was a sign for the Dio Memorial. Dio, as in RJD. There's a statue of Ronnie James Dio in Kavarna. Apparently the mayor had just been a big metal fan and wanted to make Kavarna the metal capital of Europe inviting bands like Motorhead, Deep Purple to come and play in the tiny town. He also had all the high rises adorned with these massive murals of rock legends. This is my kind of mayor. 
get that people make Glasgow shit down and replace it with something with a bit more attitude to it. We arrived not long after in Topola and since it was early we had the chance to go and set up and hit the beach. I even got some pool time here which I was extremely pleased about. It was a great campsite, probably one of the best in terms of facilities and just general vibes, but, 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 it was also honking of eggs. I think that the area has some kind of really high sulfur content, so everywhere is pure stinking at eggs, especially the water. So imagine going swimming in the pool or going in the sea and then getting a fresh shower and smelling like eggs. Not really ideal, you do get used to it, but it's not somewhere I'd probably stay for a very long period. In the morning, I did my usual stretching and warm-up exercises before we got back on the road to Varna. Varna was nice and we didn't really stay long. I think we had some lunch there, but it was just super touristy and completely mobbed with holidaymakers. So we set off with the intention of finding a good wild camp spot along the road. We left the Black Sea yesterday. We went, traveled down to Varna and then we started heading west. And it was all you know, pretty nice, pretty good, but we were looking for a place to wild camp along this road. And we kept finding these amazing spots, but there were prostitutes all along the road. Like every like 300 meters, there was a prostitute sitting. So if you see like two tires and then a bunch of bottles of water and stuff, they'd either be there or they were maybe somewhere else. And so it was very, very frustrating because we kept finding these great places, but then we couldn't actually stop because we were afraid that pimp might come and stab us for our bikes or something but um, yeah. we found this place which isn't ideal because it's not very flat but it was fine and we're still alive and now we're ready to hit the road yay 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 we're gonna go to Schumann and then don't know it's actually really funny watching this clip because I don't really talk about just how stressful that experience was. Every time we thought we'd found a good place to camp, there would literally be a prostitute. Sometimes I'd take one of the small roads to investigate a bit further away and there'd be a car just rocking about. We managed to find this spot by following a fire break in some woods right down into a bit of a clearing. I felt pretty safe at first and we definitely made the effort to get right out of the way off the road. But then we found tons of wet wipes, which sent alarm bells ringing. And right when I'd kind of calmed down a bit, a car just literally came out of nowhere and drove straight past us. My first thought was, well, I guess we'll just die here. There wasn't really a road either, so where the hell did this pure big mad 4x4 come from? Needless to say, I did not sleep at all that night, and I think I even took my big knife in the tent. Not that I really know what I would have done with it. Luckily though, we survived the night. On the way to Schumann, we also stopped at this shop for supplies and the owners were just pure raging that we were in there buying stuff and it was just a really strange experience but what made it weirder was this car pulled up and this woman got out and started wiping down her legs with all these tissues and then throwing the tissues in a bush which i thought was kind of gross and unnecessary but then the guy got out and i noticed that he was standing on the neck of what looked like a small duck which was extremely disconcerting and then he sort of realized and then picked it up took it into the bushes and started plucking it. I just, what the, what the hell was going on there? We spent the night in Schumann and even though I've searched and searched and searched, I cannot find any evidence of us being there apart from just that I remember. There's no videos, no photos. I do remember that we stayed in this Irish hotel where no one spoke any English, which was quite difficult, but we got through it, it was fine. We had a nice night out in the city, but it was pretty dead. In fact, a lot of places we went to in Bulgaria had a pretty severe lack of people. Even though our first few nights in Bulgaria had been a bit eggy and full of prostitutes, so far I was absolutely loving it. The next week would take us directly west along the Balkan mountains as we crossed almost the full length of Bulgaria. And it was not without some more serious adventures. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this first episode of a cycling through Bulgaria. There's lots of really fun things coming up in the next few episodes, so make sure you subscribe. And if you did enjoy this, leave us a like and leave us a comment. It really makes a difference to the YouTube algorithm and I really appreciate it. So thank you so much for that and I'll catch you next time. Dobra dan!